It's getting cold and snowflakes will soon be flying out west as severe weather cranks up in the plains. Heat surges through the Midwest as the tropics refuse to go quietly into the night. And the solar storm is abating, but the moon will be super full in just two days. That's right, folks. We've got something for everybody in this forecast, so stick around. We're going to look at all of it, but we're going to start right here in the tropics. Welcome into the channel, friends. Jason here with you. I'm glad you are here to track the weather with me on this Saturday, October the 4th. And we're going to start tracking the weather together right here in the tropics and see what the wide angle satellite view has to tell us. And it has to tell us quite a few things. It tells us that we've got a big tropical wave moving off the coast of Africa. It looks pretty good here in terms of the convection. It will continue to move west, northwest, and head toward the leeward and windward islands over the course of the next week or so. And once it gets into this area out here, we're going to see a much better chance of this thing developing conditions will become gradually more favorable. Got a big swirl up here in the northern Atlantic. What is that? Well, that's what's left of a melt. It's post-tropical now, and it is heading off and getting out of the picture, and it will find its demise in the northern Atlantic. Another tropical wave. We were watching this tropical wave for the chance of development, but that has since backed off. No models are really showing that. The same here in the Gulf will spread some rain, particularly into uh, southern Louisiana and along uh, the southern Gulf Coast states, and you can see some of the high-level clouds getting up in here into the southeast with flow from the west to the east here in the upper levels. More tropical wave action down here in the Caribbean. Not really expecting that to develop, but it will bring some rain to Colombia and down here into uh, Costa Rica and Belize and uh, Nicaragua and places like that up into Cancun. We're seeing some squally weather all throughout Central America and can expect that to continue over the next couple of days. There are those two waves here, one in the Bahamas, one in the Gulf, both with a zero chance of development, but they will bring some weather, uh, at least rain and some gusty winds into the islands and parts of the southeast coastal areas. But this area out here in the middle of the Atlantic, when that tropical wave from Africa gets into here, we do expect that there will be a chance of development. Most models are showing it now. 50% chance is what we have. I expect that to go up over the coming days. Meanwhile, rip currents are still a risk along the east coast. Be very, very careful if you want to go out into the water today. Pay attention to the flags. Don't stray out very far. Puerto Rico, the Gulf Coast states are seeing that as well. Tomorrow, it gets a little bit better to the north, but the waters out in the Atlantic are still very, very churned up from both of the hurricanes that we just experienced. And so that will diminish as we go through the course of the week. But in the meantime, pay attention out there as you go swimming and try not to go out too far. There is the Icon. The Icon scored 100% with the last Hurricane Imelda. It never show it, showed it hitting land when everybody else did. So let's see what it says. This goes out to 180 hours. That's just over uh, seven days. So we'll watch this. Uh, there goes Imelda. And look what happens down here in the MDR. We get on out to about Tuesday. Look at that. We start to see Monday and Tuesday a development out here. Tropical depression begins to develop where that tropical wave will be. We'll also see a cold front sweeping off the coast of the United States, and most models agree on that. Some of the models are starting to hang the southern end of that cold front up, which would be nice for the lower or the upper southeast, maybe even other portions of the southeast too, bring some beneficial rainfall in here. But the icon spins up another system down here in the Gulf and starts to spin up a system off the coast along that frontal boundary. So now we have the trifecta here. We've got a... a basically a, a depression here in the Gulf, a hurricane approaching the islands, fairly strong hurricane at that, and another tropical storm here off the coast of the eastern U.S. making its way toward New England. Is that going to happen? It's very unlikely that it would, but it's the icon and it's a uh, interesting run and I wanted to show it to you just because it looked interesting to me. I doubt that we're going to have three tropical cyclones in the Atlantic at the same time come next weekend, folks, but uh, we're going to watch all of this action out here as we do this time of year as the Atlantic is becoming gradually more favorable for development, like I showed you yesterday. In the meantime, upper level winds, you can see the winds here kind of flowing in this direction and they kind of go out that way. That's what's going on in the upper level. So as long as we have wind flow in that direction, we're not going to see anything strike the U.S. Not that there's anything over the next couple of days to strike the U.S. As we get on out toward midweek, we're still seeing big winds coming in here, blowing 
uh, out of the West uh, across the Eastern United States. So that's what's going on upstairs. Here is the European ensemble member looking at it a little bit of a different way today, showing a cluster of ensemble members developing a, that uh, tropical wave in the MDR as it moves to the west. We get on it here toward Wednesday, and then Thursday, several members take a weak tropical system into the northern islands here. So, folks, you need to be watching this as we get on in toward late next week if you're out here in the northern half of the Lesser Antilles getting up here toward Puerto Rico. Quite a few other models take it on up north and curve it out to sea and then we sort of lose the signal a lot of other models or uh, uh, members of the ensemble suite start to develop some stuff down here in the caribbean but i'm not really excited about a big big storm there's not really a big broad signal for anything down here so anyway we'll watch those waves as they come across the google deep mine shows as we get on out here toward a day six we're looking at a recurve or a curve since it hasn't curved before it's probably just a curve but most of the members of the Google DeepMind Ensemble Suite curve this system out to sea and don't really bother anybody. A couple of them bring it in here toward the Northern Islands, but that's just about it. As far as other action along the coast in the Caribbean, not very much of a signal for it. But it is the time of year where we need to watch all of these things, particularly waves and convection close to the United States. And we'll keep an eye on that. Right now, we're going to take a look at what's going on over the lower 48 today and over the next couple of days to round out your weekend forecast and then take a sneak peek at what's coming on later next week. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, folks, then uh, please consider doing that and joining the team. Hit the button down below, give the content a like, turn the notifications on by ringing the bell, and leave a comment in the comment section. If there's anything I can be in prayer about, please put it in the comments. We'll be sure and pray over that, and if you have a question or any other comment, let me know. Love to hear from you. Let me know where you're commenting from. I read and respond to all of those, and really thank you for the engagement. It helps YouTube push the video out to a wider audience, too, so we can grow the channel together. Uh, but right now, we're going to take a look here at the water vapor loop in the mid-levels, and you can see a few interesting things here. Got that system out here in the Gulf spreading some high clouds in here into the southeast. No rain is really falling out from under these clouds until you get right down here to the tip of Louisiana, maybe along the Gulf Coast as well. Florida, you're seeing some rain along the East Coast and then across Georgia and occasional showers up and down uh, to uh, the uh, Southeast Coast here. But a uh, big storm out here in the uh, Pacific pushing in that way. Another trough here spinning over the Four Corners region just north of there. And I uh, see that southerly flow, that southwesterly flow out of the Pacific bringing plenty of clouds and rain in here and a lot of dry air working in uh, around uh, Texas and into the mid-levels as we get on in toward the uh, southern plains there. That's what's going on with the water vapor imagery. That storm out west is particularly impactful over the next couple of days and I'll show you why that is. We're going to see some snow, we're going to see some severe weather and some heavy rain, all kinds of stuff is coming out west. And there you go, you got the radar this morning showing scattered showers and pockets of rain across Montana back into Wyoming, Idaho and some heavy rain around Salt Lake City this morning and then back here into the western sections of Colorado as well. Even some showers pushing into the Dakotas at this hour. Here is the map. We've got a lot of special weather statements and a couple of red flag warnings. Going to be windy across the plains. And that'll get windier tomorrow across the northern plains. Definitely going to see a risk of severe weather uh, as we go through the day today from uh, North Dakota back in toward portions of northern uh, Colorado, especially around the Cheyenne area. That's where the threat is maximized with uh, potential for some strong winds and a little bit of hail uh, action going on as well. We've got a low-level jet that'll be cranking up tonight. This low-pressure system from that upper low, it's generating a surface low. That's getting its act together, dragging in some jet dynamics. We've got a lot of wind shear in the mid-levels. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of moisture at the surface to really build that instability and get those deep updrafts that are vigorous. Uh, if we did, we'd have a lot more in the way of severe weather. But uh, just thankfully, you've got a slight risk here around Cheyenne, a small area of that, and then just isolated to scattered uh, thunderstorms with some severe weather possible. But look at back here in uh, parts of Wyoming and up into Montana, winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings for some of those higher peaks above 5,000 feet. We're going to see those freezing levels drop as rain 
rain changes to snow, bringing several inches of snow to you guys. It's going to be colder behind this system as we work through the weekend. As I said, it's going to be windy too. We've got winds gusting into the 30s, even some 40s in the higher elevations down here today. And as we go through the day tomorrow, look at this. Winds are picking up in earnest across the Dakotas and Minnesota as that low pressure really starts to crank up and bring in some wind energy. Everybody else, not too bad around uh, the most of the rest of the country here. There is your uh, surface front. We've got a sort of a stalled frontal boundary up here in Canada, but uh, the cold front is advancing as these low pressure systems consolidate here, get its act together. It's going to zoom off in this direction like that, drag this cold front through. Snow and cold air will follow that storm, and you can see lots of areas here with snow. Some showers, of course, through Florida and across the southeast and Gulf Coast states. We've got an onshore flow, and wind is coming in off the Atlantic in the low levels. Off the west, out of the west of the high levels, we saw that earlier, but out of uh, the east and the low levels, and that is bringing lots of moisture along the coastal sections, giving you showers and thunderstorms out there. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at the radar, uh, advance this on out. So this is this morning and you can see those showers here in the west and rain here in Louisiana and just scattered showers along the coastal sections of the southeast. But look what happens through the day. We start to see blues pop up with snow in the higher elevations. That low pressure gets its act together and we'll begin to see uh, some organization to a few of these uh, thunderstorm cells, maybe get a couple of line segments out of this, particularly along the frontal boundary. That's where I would expect to see things kind of maximize later in the period as we go into the evening hours and uh, Everything will kind of pull up into the north and bring some heavy rain up here, probably an inch or two of rain when all is said and done up here around North Dakota. And as we go on through the day tomorrow, again, uh, just cons you'll watch rainfall continue here in the Gulf Coast states as that little wave starts to push inland. And again, more onshore flow bringing showers out here. Things will diminish and kind of calm down in the north, but you'll see scattered showers breaking out here in the southeast. So parts of uh, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, certainly Florida, be cloudy tomorrow, potentially with some rain as we head through the day. If you've got outdoor plans, maybe today's a chance to do those, give you the best opportunity to get outside. Meanwhile, up here in the Northeast, Great Lakes, back through the Ohio Valley, Southern Plains, and even well to the Southwest, you're going to be in good shape for all of your outdoor plans. It's going to be warm, depending on where you are in the country, and cooling off up here in the North and west. And as we go on out through time, we get into Sunday afternoon. See that frontal boundary shows up quite nicely. Uh, still lingering moisture in the southeast, bringing some showers through the evening. As we get on into Monday morning, going to be breaking out or waking up to showers rather than here in the Mississippi Valley. And then see that cold front advance east as we go on out in time. And we'll pick that up here in just a few minutes. But uh, certainly going to see some rain move through the east over the first part of the week at least. Taking a look at total rainfall as we go through the day on Saturday, the bulk of the rain will fall from Utah up here through northern Minnesota where as much as an inch could fall. The yellow is an inch. The blue is a half an inch. The green is about a tenth of an inch. So it kind of goes upwards as you get toward these brighter colors. And so you can see that corridor of rain, northern Wyoming, southern uh, um, Montana into the western Dakotas and central Dakotas up here to um, Minnesota. So that's what we're looking at, the bulk of the heavy rain, and then also down here across uh, southern Louisiana could pick up several inches of rain too. Watch out for some localized flooding there. And then as we go through the day Sunday, Rain will be pulling out slowly across the Dakotas back into the uh, Midwest here. We're going to see that front start to take shape in advance. So we'll see some rain through the day on Sunday. And then, of course, into the southeast, like I showed you earlier with that radar. As far as temperatures go, got some... Um, really, really warm air surging into the plains. Let me get this over your center so we can see the whole thing. Florida up into the Midwest, really looking warm, much warmer than normal for this time of year. Average temperature should be in the 40s across the north, and we're looking at highs near 90 up here in and around Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, folks, and St. Paul and all of these places all up into the Great Lakes. Warming up tomorrow, 60s from Maine to the near 80 into the upper parts of the southeast. A little bit better out here in the west, but still above normal in spots. But as we go into Sunday, we'll see that cool air push in out of Canada out here, bringing highs down into the 50s. We'll still see warm air surging here into the eastern half of the country where temperatures will remain above normal and muggy here, getting muggier and muggier across the south and southeast ahead of that front. We'll see winds come out of the south and really bring in the moisture as far as low temperatures go. 
Sunday morning, boy, look at this, waking up to very, very cool temperatures out here in the uh, west. Still warm, much warmer than normal, but crisp along the east coast. It's still going to be warmer than normal in some of these spots, but it feels pretty good because the air is dry. And as we get on into Monday morning, really colder and colder here as that cold air just works in out of Canada, waking up to highs below for low temperatures will be much below freezing in certain areas here up into the northern plains and the northern Rockies, folks. And well above freezing out here in the east. And that's what we've got going on for the next couple of days. Now we're going to take a look at what's happening next week and what's happening up in space. Got a couple of things up there that of interest to look at. All right, we'll take a quick look at precipitation as we go through the week. We'll start here Monday morning. You can see that front up in the Midwest working east slowly as we go through the day. Scattered showers out ahead of that. Some moisture here in the southeast. You'll see that high pressure trying to give way. Kind of see the kinks in the isobars here, but uh, that high pressure will give way through the week as we get on out here into Tuesday. And in toward Wednesday morning, that cold front will be slipping through the northeast and looks like it may hang up. Some of the models have been showing this blast through, but uh, looks looking more and more like it may hang up here in the south. That would provide a focus for continued rain in portions of the upper southeast and maybe other sections outside of that area here in the southeast. We'll just have to watch that, but that could provide some beneficial rain fall to us here in North Carolina, at least. High pressure building in behind that, so nice back out here in the Midwest and the Great Lakes and into New England. And as we go on through the remaining portion of the week, the high pressure will build in and eventually that front will slip off the coast into the southeast as high pressure kind of wedges down and hopefully clears things out a bit. Temperatures as we go through the week above normal starting out well above normal here in the northeast on Monday with a blast of cool air coming out of Canada to put things below normal where it's been quite warm in the northern plains and you'll see that uh, go on move on toward the south and southeast but not do so with any big punch. Most of the cool anomalies will head off to the east and gradually filter down the eastern slopes of the apse as we get a little bit of wedging, but uh, warm air returns back out in the plains behind that frontal zone with another push of cool air coming out of Canada. So we're gonna see warm ups and cool downs and warm ups and cool downs as you would expect this time of year. I think on balance, we're going to stay warmer than normal, particularly in the eastern portion of the country. There are some signs that we might get a legitimate cold front later in the period, maybe even toward as we get past mid month. But again, that's a uh, conjecture at this point. We'll have to watch and see what happens. But in the meantime, look for a little bit of variability to your weather, especially across the northern half of the country as we head through next week. Here on the space weather side of things, we finally made it out of geomagnetic storm conditions, though we'll have to contend with a little bit more solar wind over the next couple of days. And barring any solar flares from any of those sunspots turning in, we may kind of continue to creep down and quiet things back down. But you can see the green bars here on the KP, no big sunspots or solar flares going off. I keep wanting to call them sunspots, but they're solar flares. Sunspots help create solar flares. And we're seeing no big solar flares. So that's good news. The end little shows a little bit here. Let's back this up. Get on back here. There it is. So we're going to see a little bit of an enhancement of the solar winds. So that could put us back in minor geomagnetic storm conditions. If that happens, we'll see a better chance of auroras than we currently do, which is pretty low at this point. But uh, super moon, you've heard of the super moon. You probably have maybe seen an article or somebody talk about it on your local weather station. Well, yeah, super moon's coming. It's going to coincide with the first full moon in October, which is the harvest moon. What is a super moon? Well, super moon is when you have a full moon when the moon is near its closest point to the earth in its orbit around the earth it's called the perigee when it's at its perigee its closest point to the earth and you get a full moon then it's a super moon it appears larger and brighter and what a time to have a super moon when it's a harvest moon folks hopefully it's going to come up and we'll get to see it be orange on the horizon of course here in the east i think it's coming up just a little bit too early before we get too dark so we may not be able to see that but some of you may and uh, enjoy it if you do but uh, it'll be a big bright moon hope you enjoy it and that's the forecast for today folks i hope you've uh, enjoyed if you got any questions let me know in the comments section otherwise be back on monday with a full episode of cold rains weather world and your weather iq questions question and take a look at everything else that's going on around the world. If there's anything that's happening in the meantime, I'll tweet about it or X about it or post about it or whatever you call it on X at Real Cold Rain. Have a good rest of the weekend, folks. We'll see you soon.